Okay, east is dealer. East, west are vulnerable, north, south are not. So east a bit first. Okay, so East has got an interesting hand. We've got uh, seven points in total and a 6 4 2 1 shape. And importantly, we've got a good quality six card suit. So when you have a six card suit or longer of reasonable quality, um, you can open a preemptive bid. That's assuming you haven't got enough points to open one, which we don't. Um, so we can open a week two here in hearts. This is kind of a classic week two. Good quality heart suit, not enough points to open one, but a good quality six card suit. Um, six four is actually quite a good shape. It's not six three two two. Six four two one is actually much better because it's more distributional. Um, so yeah, this is this is kind of quite a solid week two. Definitely the right thing to do to open two hearts. Now to south. Okay, well, it's probably not going to take me long to work out what to bid with this hand. 4-3-3-3, uh, three, 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 which is the worst shape, absolutely balanced and flat, and one point. Um, so absolutely nothing to say. You, you pretty much never be bidding on this hand unless your partner forced you to bid with a double or you were doing level at the fate or something like that. So this is a straightforward pass. Now to West, responding to their partner's week two. Okay, what have we got here? We've got 14, 16 points in total. Quite a nice shape, 5, 4, 2, 2. Quite importantly, we have two hearts with an honour, so that's a nice fit for our partner's week two. So we know we have a heart fit, because our partner has six, we have two. Um, so the question mark is whether we can make game or not. So partner has sort of five to ten-ish points for their week two. We have um, 16. So if our partner's nearer the top, sort of eight, nine, ten-ish, we think we can make game. If they're more like five, we probably don't want to be in game. So we need to ask them, are they minimum or maximum for their week two bid? Now your instinct might be to bid three hearts. This would be kind of a natural way of going bid four with a few more points. The problem with that is we use three hearts as a level of the fit bid. So this wouldn't invite them to bid more. This would say, I have a weak hand with three hearts with you. So we need a way of inviting them to bid game, asking them, are they minimum or maximum? This is where you use a conventional bid known as the two no trumps inquiry. It's after a week two opening bid. We bid two no trumps here. And it says, I have a good hand, which is usually about 16 points or more. And I have a fit for your suit, which is two cards or more. Are you minimum or maximum for your week two? Because I think we can make game if you are maximum. So that's two no trumps. It's alertable because it's a conventional bid. And it asks the week twoer to describe whether they're min or max for their original bid. Okay, now to north. Okay, interesting hand for North here. They've got uh, nine, ten, 16 points in total. Um, not often you will have a very good hand in this bidding scenario. Usually the week two has kind of five to ten-ish. This hand has 16 or more. Normally we're passing throughout here because this hand is so strong. West has got a good hand. It's what we know from this two no trump bid. However, we have a good hand. Um, we know our partner won't have a very good hand, but we, don't, we not only have a good hand points-wise, we have good distribution. We've got a really nice club suit here. Um, so we're definitely bidding on this hand. We've got to bid on, on these kind of hands, even though our partner might have nothing. We've got to get involved with these clubs. And the worst, worst case scenario is we win seven clubs and a heart. That's like absolute worst case scenario. So we'll, even in three clubs, we'll be one off in the worst case scenario. Um, so I'm just wondering whether we should be bidding more clubs, uh, you know, jumping to maybe three, four clubs or five clubs maybe. Um, but I'm thinking we're not quite preemptive enough for that. Um, our hand is almost too good to just jump to four or five clubs. So I'm thinking we just bid three clubs. The worst thing that will happen is our partner will at least lead as a club. That's the, you know, that's the minimum. Um, best case scenario, our partner can support our clubs and we might have a sacrifice on in five clubs rather than letting them make four hearts, for example. Um, so certainly bidding on this hand, not often you will bid at this scenario, but this hand is so good points-wise and distribution-wise that we're definitely worth a bid here. So I'd be bidding three clubs. Okay, so back to the week tour. Now, now, as previously mentioned, it's unusual for this hand to bid, intervene with our kind of conventional inquiry bid. Um, but we, given that it's only three clubs, we can sort of ignore it, because um, we probably won't bid three clubs anyway ourselves. So we can kind of carry on as normal, um, albeit we do need to be aware that they've probably got a fair few clubs over there. So this 2 no trump inquiry says, I have a heart fit and I've got a good hand, 16 plus points. So we have to decide, do we think this is minimum or maximum? If we go purely on points... We've got kind of 5 to 10 points for this bid. We have 7. 7 is nearer 5 than it is 10, so therefore this will be considered minimum on points alone. However, distribution for me merits us upgrading this to actually being a maximum. 6-4 is a really good shape. And not only that, we've got our points in our suits. That also is good. So for me, this is actually a maximum week 2, albeit I agree it's close to the mark. 
So we need to decide how kind of complex or fancy we want to be in response to this two-note trump inquiry. There's two ways, two schools of thought. Simplistic, three hearts is minimum, four hearts is maximum. That's nice and straightforward. In this instance, I would just jump to four hearts. Or you can use other bits to describe something about your hand. So I play a system known as show a feature, which means if you are maximum, you bid three of a suit you have something good in outside of your trump suit. So if we were to bid three clubs, which we can't in this instance, three diamonds or three spades, that would say I have a maximum and I have something good here. If you are minimum, you just bid three of your trump suit saying not interested, thank you. So again, it depends on whether we judge this as a minimum or a maximum. For me, this is a maximum because of our distribution and the location of our points. So I would be either just jumping straight to four hearts, if you kind of, you know, whatever, we'll just bid four hearts, or bid three diamonds trying to give your partner a little bit more information. I'm maximum and I have a good diamond suit. So for me, that's better because it lets them judge whether to go for game or not in a more kind of informed position. And also, if they start preempting us in clubs, it lets your partner know where your cards are as to whether they need to double and bid on, etc. So for me, it's good if you can give more information, but it is more complex. So I wouldn't judge you if you went for the kind of three hearts, four hearts thing, minimum, maximum. That's nice and simplistic. But for me, I quite like the scientific nature of playing three diamonds as showing a maximum and something good in diamonds. So that's the bid I would make here. Okay, so responding to partner's overcall. Um, usually you want to try to bid level of the fit if you're weak, which we are definitely weak here. Um, so it's all about how many clubs can we rely on our partner to have here. So bidding at the three level on their own, you would quite frequently expect six cards. It would be unusual if it was five. If they did have five clubs, they'd be five very good clubs. But to be honest, it should really be six clubs. Um, so if we assume six clubs, we've got three. Six plus three is nine. Therefore, we can um, bid to the three level. Nine tricks is three. So we're already at the level of the fit. So the only alternative, the only kind of other thing to consider is do we want to push one beyond the level of the fit? Of course, they might have seven clubs, which we don't know. But um, if they only have six, do we want to push one more? So there's one thing that's in our favor, and that's the vulnerability. We are green against red. That's good vulnerability to be pushing. Um, and the thing that's not in our favor is the shape of our hand. Yes, I know our hand's weak, it only has one point. But if the distribution was different, I'd be more inclined. For example, if those two were spades, and we were five, three, four, one, or however it would work out, then I would be, I would be more inclined, or, or six, three, three, one, or whatever it would work out. I'd be more inclined to be bidding clubs, um, pushing the boat, if you will, because of our distribution. In this instance, we have about the worst hand we could have. Four, three, three, three is bad distribution. One point, yes, it is in partner's club suit. Um, but it's the distribution I don't like. You know, we're going to have lots of quick losers is the feeling I've got. So I would probably pass. Uh, I certainly wouldn't judge you for bidding four clubs. I just think it's pushy based on the shape. You, know, you, you probably want a single turn or maybe another club or something to be pushing the boat to four clubs. So I think pass is the right bid. But I don't think it's an instant pass. I don't think it's as clear cut as you might think it is. Um, but I do think pass is the right thing based on our, our poor shape. Okay, back to West now. Um, so, partner has, if we're playing show a feature, which it looks like we are, partner has shown us a maximum hand with a good feature, a good card if you like, something good, in the diamond suit. That is about the dream response we could have had. Partner has shown us a good hand for their week two, so we know they're towards the top of their range, and they have a good card slash good cards in the suit that we have a long suit in. So it feels to me like we're going to draw the trumps and then run all our diamonds. That's how the hand's going to play, is what it feels like. Them having good diamonds means we actually have a double fit. We've got a fit in diamonds and we've got a fit in hearts. So it's looking very, very good with regards to prospect of tricks. Slam probably isn't on because even if our partner has a maximum of, let's say, 10 points, um, Slam won't be on because we only have 16. So it feels like we're probably going to have a loser in trumps and a loser in clubs or maybe a slow loser in spades and a slow loser in clubs or something. It's unlikely we're going to be able to make 12 tricks just on the sheer lack of points, to be honest. Um, especially given that they bid clubs. We might even have two quick losing clubs, for example. So I'm just going to bid four hearts. I'm not going to investigate slam. I'm certainly not signing off in three hearts. The diamond bid is perfection with regards to this hand. It fits the suit we want it to fit and the maximum. So I'm going for game in hearts. And I'm thinking we're probably going to have a nice easy time. Draw the trumps, run the diamonds or something like that. And so straight to four hearts to try and end the bidding there. Okay, so West has jumped to four hearts. It looks like they liked their partner's diamond bid showing a maximum uh, with feature in diamonds. So now we've got a consideration here as North. Um, partner has not supported us. So 
As far as we're concerned, partner has no clubs, no points. Um, that's obviously a very pessimistic view, but it's probably somewhat realistic. Um, we know they have a heart fit, so partner is very likely to have, let's say, a club or a couple of clubs, um, but they certainly won't have much help with regards to high card strength. So if we imagine we're on our own in five clubs, let's presume we have no club losers. The ace-king-queen mops the suit up, which is very likely. We've got one diamond loser, probably two spade losers, and a heart loser. So in total, that's one, two, three, four losers. So if we're playing on our own in clubs, we're likely to make, let's say, nine tricks. That's probably, probably fair. We might lose an extra spade if both ace and king of spades are in this hand. But that kind of can't be true based on their week two. Um, so I think it's very likely we lose two spades, a diamond and a heart. So we're going to make nine tricks there or thereabouts. So in five clubs, if we make nine tricks, let's presume they're going to double us. We're going to go two off. Five clubs needs 11. We can only make nine. And that's assuming partner can't help us, of course, but let's, let's make that assumption. So we're going to make nine tricks in clubs. We need 11, so we'll be two off. Two off, doubled, not vulnerable. That's an important thing that we're not vulnerable. Doubled, not vulnerable is 300. Whereas they are going to make 620 or more in four hearts. So the only other thing to think about, that looks like an obvious five club bid now. We're going to save 300 points by playing in clubs instead of hearts. The only thing to think about is, are they definitely going to make four hearts? Um, and the answer is pretty much yes. We're going to make a club, maybe two clubs if we're really lucky, if they break you know, perfectly evenly, but probably not, let's be honest. Um, and we're going to make a heart for certain, but then the, the rest of the tricks, we're probably not going to make anything. The opponents have got good diamonds, so it's likely our spade trick is not a trick. Um, so we'll make one club, one heart, maybe two clubs, one heart, if we're really lucky. So I think four hearts, they're going to walk home in four hearts. Not only that, I think five clubs is not going to be miles away. We're going to be two off there or thereabouts. I mean, if partner has a dream card like the king of spades, um, or jack of clubs, ace of diamonds, or some kind of smattering which helps us, we might even only go one off in five clubs. So I'm thinking five clubs is a definite correct sacrifice, especially at this vulnerability. We can afford to go three off doubled and not vulnerable and still be better. Three off would be 500, assuming they double, and they're going to make 620 at least. So even three off's okay. So even if we make eight tricks, it's still a good sacrifice. Don't just make a sacrificial bid just because you don't want to defend their contract. You must calculate whether you think they're going to make their contract or not. We would feel very silly if we bid five clubs, got doubled, went off, and then found out that their four heart contract was also going off. In this instance, we can be pretty sure they're going to make four hearts because we just don't have enough defensive tricks ourselves. So therefore, I think this is a clear-cut five-club bid. You could have argued, well, why didn't you bid five clubs over two no-trumps? Um, yeah, I mean, it's a fair argument. Uh, they might not have found out the minimum-maximum thing. Um, but I think it was right to bid three clubs first to let our partner know we have strength as well as um, long clubs. If we jumped to five clubs, that would have been a hand with lots of clubs and not necessarily points. So I'm going to bid five clubs because I think they're going to make this and I think we're not going to be too bad if we get doubled because we're only going to go a couple off. Okay, so back to the week two hand. Um, we shouldn't really be bidding anymore. We've, we've got a week two, which is what we've said we've got, and we've got a good card in diamonds or good cards in diamonds um, and towards the top of our range. So I don't think this decision is up to us. We've described what we have. Our partner is the one to decide whether to bid five hearts, whether to double or do something different. Um, so, because we have nothing more to say, I, I will be passing. The only time we'd really be taking action here is if we had something really extra to say, like we were 6-5, or we had really good clubs and we wanted to double them, or something really weird. Uh, in this instance, we don't have anything extra to say, so let's leave the decision to our partner. So, South's passed. The partner of the five club bid has passed because they've got nothing to say. Um, so, now it's down to the decision of West. West is probably somewhat irritated by this five club bid because it's quite obviously a sacrificial bid. We have the points. We have kind of... 25-ish between the two of us. So North just appears to have distribution. These, they have lots of clubs. Um, they're sacrificing against our four, four heart contract. It looks like we're going to make four hearts because we could probably lose uh, you know, a club and a heart or a club and a spade or, or something in that iteration. Five hearts is starting to get questionable. If we imagine our partner has, let's say, ace, king of hearts, queen of diamonds, which is about the maximum perfection hand, um, we might still have two losers. We might lose a slow spade and maybe a couple of clubs, or maybe they don't quite have the king of hearts, and we have a king of hearts loser. It's starting to, doubt is starting to creep in as to whether we can make 11 tricks. 10 tricks was probably pretty safe. 11 tricks is getting dodgy now. This is a really fine decision point here. If West bids five hearts and they go off, that really is bad, because we know five clubs is very likely going off. If instead West doubles and five clubs goes, let's say, two off, we might have missed our 600 
scoring game and instead only scored 300 to take them off. So you could argue either direction, double is right because we don't know five hearts is making or bid five hearts because we want to get our vulnerable game. This is why North's bid is good. The vulnerability is really annoying for us because we want to really be in four hearts and we can't. So we have to defend five clubs doubled or we have to bid five hearts. There are two options. Um, and to be honest, it's really close. It's really, really close. I think there's probably two losers, but there might be three. So it's really close. The thing that's probably going to push me to bid five hearts um, is the fact that our partner has bid diamonds, which is kind of the thing that makes me think this hand is going to play nicely. Because we have two fits. We have a heart fit and a diamond fit. Whenever you have a double fit, you really want to declare the hand. Because what happens in a double fit is you draw the trumps and you play your winning diamonds or winning whatever your suit is. In this instance, our side suit is diamonds. The risk of bidding five hearts is the opponents cash two clubs and then they cash, let's say, the ace of hearts. That, that would be the worst case scenario if partner has like king jack of hearts, queen jack of diamonds and the queen of spades or something like that. So the opponents can just go club, club, heart and just take us straight off. It's pretty pessimistic. It's probably quite likely that we can wrestle control of the hand and probably make 11 tricks, albeit I am uncertain. Um, given the vulnerability, I'm going to push for the vulnerable game bonus, but I accept that five hearts is risky. The only thing that's making me do it is the double fit. Diamonds and hearts being fitted is really good. So that's what I'm going to go for. I'm going to go for five hearts, but it is pushy. And you could, at the end of the hand, think, oh, I'm so silly, I should have doubled five clubs because five hearts went one off and three, five clubs was going two or three off. But it's just the way it is. This is why North's five club bit is so good. But I am going to push just for that vulnerable game. I'm going to push to five hearts. Okay, so we've achieved one of the two things we wanted there. North's five club bid, our, our five club bid, was, it was designed to either push them up or play in clubs and get doubled and, and lose less points than them making four hearts. So we've achieved one of those things, which is we push them up. We might be tempted to bid six clubs on the back of, well, if they're going to make five hearts, then we'll be doubled and we'll only be off three in six clubs, etc., etc. But I don't think there's a certainty they're making five hearts anymore. They were almost certainly making four hearts, but we might have three defensive tricks in against five hearts. We've certainly got, I would like to think a club and a heart are pretty certain. We might have a slow spade trick or, a sl or an extra club trick, depending on the club break. So I don't think six clubs is right because we don't know five hearts was making. Five clubs over four hearts was right because we're pretty certain four hearts is making, whereas five hearts is probably on the knife edge now. So I would pass and hope to defeat five hearts. I wouldn't double five hearts because I'm not certain, uh, but it's pretty close, it is pretty close. Um, certainly not six clubs though, so I, I would be passing now in the hope that pushing them up one has actually pushed them to an unsafe contract. Okay, so everyone passed five hearts out and now we're around to South, who's got to lead against five hearts. Um, you would really be shocked if you didn't lead a club here. Your partner's bid clubs twice, they've obviously got really good clubs. Now I know the opponent's going to be short in clubs, but there is absolutely no reason to lead anything other than a club here. Your partner's basically asked for a club lead twice. Um, so it's definitely right to lead clubs. Not only that, we haven't got anything else attractive going on. We've not got an ace-king, we've not got a singleton, we've not got anything that might merit us looking away from a club lead. Given that we have an honour in clubs, we should lead a low one. Um, albeit, I don't think the clubs are going to go around too many times, because our partner should have probably seven, maybe eight clubs. So they're probably going to go around once-ish. Um, but we should still tell our partner what's going on in the club suit. So I'd lead low, and it looks to me like the defence is going to be on our partner. We're probably just going to be following suit and not doing anything too impactful. Um, but I would lead a club and let's see if they can take three tricks and take them off. Okay, so let's see the dummy. Right, so looking in the trump contract, we want to try to look at our potential losers and see how we can reduce them. So we are quite pleased with the dummy, to be honest. We've got nice diamonds, we've got two top spades to win those spade losers. Um, so the only consideration really, the only problem is a losing club and a losing heart. If you just look kind of at an initial analysis, diamonds are good, hearts are good apart from the ace, spades are fine because we have the ace king, we've got this losing club. So it actually looks like this hand is kind of going to play itself. It needs to get rid of the ace of hearts, draw the trumps and then run the diamonds. There's nothing we can rough on the dummy, so there's no reason not to draw the trumps. And in fact, we want to draw the trumps because then we can enjoy this lovely diamond suit. The only potential threat is some kind of mishap in the diamonds. Um, they win the ace of hearts, then someone leads a diamond, and then they can get a diamond rough. So they would win a club, ace of hearts, and then trump a diamond. That might be a third defensive trick for the opponents. But other than that, I feel like we're pretty safe in this five-heart contract. Lose the ace of hearts, lose a club, but then the rest should be ours. 
We've got to draw the trumps because we need to draw the trumps before running all these diamonds. Um, it looks to me like the opponents haven't led diamonds, so they're not going to get a diamond rough. Um, the diamonds could be 2-2, of course, in which case there never is a diamond rough. So it looks to me like they're going to win a club, probably play another club which we can trump, then knock out the ace of hearts. They play whatever they play, we win, and then draw the trumps. King of hearts, jack of hearts, ten of hearts, etc. A 5-nil heartbreak would really hurt us, but that's quite unlikely. And a 4-1 heartbreak we can deal with because we have king, queen, jack, ten. So the queen loses to the ace, let's say, and the king, jack, ten will draw the remainder of the trumps. So this hand is kind of going to play itself. Get rid of the ace of hearts, draw the trumps, run the diamonds. Whenever you're going to draw the trumps in a trump contract, just worth noting that if you are going to draw the trumps, you need to be thinking, what suit am I playing next? Don't just draw the trumps because that's what you do. You should draw trumps with the view of, I'm going to play them next. So we're drawing trumps because we want to enjoy, enjoy those nice diamonds. So we're going to lose a club, probably rough the club continuation, get rid of the ace of hearts, get back in, draw the trumps, run the diamonds. Something to that effect. So for this instance, it doesn't really matter what club we play. You can try the 10 if you like. It's not going to win because we know they've got good clubs here. Um, so it doesn't really matter. Play the 4, see what they win with. Um, but yeah, we're going to be playing trumps as soon as we can. Okay, so they play the queen of clubs. Remember, you play bottom of touching cards when you're following suit. Uh, not that it particularly matters in this instance, but it's just good practice. So we lose the club. We're always going to lose that club. Nothing, nothing surprising going on there. And now the most likely continuation is the ace of clubs. The only other thing they might think about is leading this singleton diamond to void themselves of diamonds. And then, if their partner gains the lead, which is probably unlikely to be honest, but if their partner gains the lead, they can lead a diamond and they can rough it. Unfortunately for them, if they have a quick think about the points, they had 16, dummy has 16, this hand has a good week 2, which is probably 7 or 8, which means their partner has very, very few points, 1 or 0. So this singleton diamond defence is probably not going to work, because their partner can't get the lead, is basically what I'm thinking. So I think our best defensive opportunity, or chance, is to try to cash another club in the hope that both hands, both declarer and dummy, have a club left. And we can cash this club and win the ace of hearts and take the three tricks we were hoping for. So, top of touching, lead the ace of clubs, we can rough low, no need to rough high, it's extremely unlikely the clubs are 9-1, it's, it's probably a slim possibility, but extremely unlikely, they would have probably bid 5 clubs earlier. So that's that, rough the club, and now we want to draw the trumps, we want to get rid of that ace of hearts to draw the trumps. Best to play low to the queen, to get rid of highest from shortest, unblocks the suit, just the best practice. Low heart to the queen. Now they could duck with the ace of hearts, and what they would do there is they'd strip us of hearts, which would make getting to our hand a little bit tricky, um, or they could win the ace of hearts. It, it, it honestly doesn't really matter in this instance, but you might defensively think, oh, I'll duck the ace of hearts. The only time you might not do this is if your partner has jack to three hearts, by ducking you are actually not getting your extra trump trick. So I think as a defender you'd probably take your ace and hope your partner has jack x of hearts sat behind the king ten, something like that. Um, that's not the case in this instance, but it's a possibility. So you probably would win the ace of hearts rather than ducking the heart. It's good to kill the queen with the ace, is what I'm trying to say, defensively speaking. Now an interesting defence this hand might try is another club trying to convince Declarer to trump high um, to, to make sure they're not over rough. That's an interesting defence they could try. Anything else actually relinquishes the lead to Declarer. They're going to rattle the trumps, rattle the diamonds. Don't forget this hand knows that this hand bid diamonds. So they know they've got good diamonds, so the diamonds are just going to run. So the only possibility of a misplay from Declarer is a club, they rough too high and suddenly they lose control of trumps. As it happens, Declarer has such good trumps that they can afford to rough high and still draw the trumps. Imagine they didn't have the 10 and partner had the 10 instead. You might have to trump high and then you lose control because you lose the 10 of hearts. It's the only defensive chance they really have, to be honest. So the king of clubs... Now this hand knows this hand has another club, but Declarer doesn't know that. That's important. Declarer is thinking, oh no, what about a club over rough? Now if Declarer was watching the defence carefully, this hand led the two of clubs and then followed with the eight of clubs. If they had a doubleton in clubs, they should have led the eight and then followed with the two. Not only that, the low club was won by the queen on the right, which would suggest they don't have the jack. So everything is pointing towards this hand starting with jack to three clubs. So you could argue, I'm going to confidently throw a loser away and trump this club on the dummy, or I'm going to rough small, because I don't need to, I want the lead here. Um, but interestingly, you might be paranoid or concerned that this defender has misled you by playing the clubs in the wrong order, or this hand has not played the queen, has played the queen instead of the jack, etc. So you might, through paranoia, play the jack, ten, or king, roughing high. Um, but if we trust 
what's happened in the defence. If the defence has, hasn't misled us, haven't lied to us, we can afford to rough low knowing that this hand must have another club. It's all about how much you trust the defenders, and of course you shouldn't really trust the defenders unless you have to. Um, this is why their bidding was so good, because they've taken two tricks already. If we get this decision wrong, we're going to go off in five hearts, which is going to be disastrous. Um, so I can, I can see how you might make a case for roughing high, but by roughing high, you're actually going to lose to a 4-1 trump break. If one opponent has three to the nine, you can't get the nine of hearts off them. So I think the best thing is to trust the card play you've seen so far and throw away a losing card, roughing over there, or indeed rough it small so that we can play a three hearts here. It doesn't actually matter, but I'm going to rough here just so we're in the right hand um, to then draw the trumps. But I'm roughing low, confident, quote-unquote confident, that this hand must have the jack of clubs left. There is a possibility this goes wrong if both of the defenders have conspired to lie against me. This hand pretending they had three clubs when they only had two. This hand pretending they don't have the jack of clubs when indeed they did. Um, so it's all about you know how much you trust them, whether you're going to take this line or the other line. Roughing high would work when trumps are breaking 3-2 originally, which would work in this instance. Roughing low works when the opponents have told the truth in clubs, which also works. So I actually can't go wrong, but you can see how you would have a, a painstaking choice here, which is why this defence is their only chance, really. So I'm going to rough low. They follow with the jack of clubs. You breathe a sigh of relief because you realise, yes, they did tell the truth. Thank God for that. Um, if you got over rough with the nine there, you'd have felt very sad. But that's kind of the way it is. Um, we win that one. And now you can see how we've got our route to success. What's going to happen in the next tricks is we're going to play the king of hearts, the jack of hearts, and if necessary, the ten of hearts, if the trumps, all three missing trumps were in one hand, which they aren't in this instance, and then we have all winners. Ace, king, queen, jack of diamonds, ace, king of spades. We have too many winners, to be honest. So we've just lost the two tricks we thought we would, the ace of hearts and the high club. Eleven tricks in total.